Not another Anon story. Chapter 4 It was all quiet aboard the Friendship Express. Our two interpret traveling partners had long since retired for the evening to cash in a good night's rest. Anon sat reclined in his chair, a book open in front of him, presumably abandoned in favor of sweet dreams some time ago. He had lasted longer than Twilight had, at least. She had killed over some time before him, likely tired from the excitement of her own day. After she had gone to bed, he had decided to pull out his phone and put on some music for himself and a pair of headphones covering his ears, gently pouring relaxing familiar music into his ears as he enjoyed his own slumber. All stayed quiet this way for some time until the first rays of light peeked through the window and beat his eyelids. He gave a small groan and slowly woke up, stretching in a seat and sitting up, looking around a bit groggily. He closed the book in his lap and put away his electronics, silently thanking himself for deciding to buy that battery pack on his last camping trip. It saved him from more than a few cold nights trapped on the stoop of his apartment block with a dead phone, and it presumably would save him from plenty of long, boring trips in the future. After he put away his things, he closed his backpack and slung it back over his shoulder, making his way up a few seats to get a better look at Twilight, where she seemed to still be fast asleep. Hey, Twy, you, uh, you awake? He asked as he approached, his words trailing off as he got a better look at her. Or rather, at her horn. Her horn seemed to have, over the course of the evening, become quite hilariously floppy, and was covered with blue spots. He stifled a chortle behind one hand as he slowly reached back, pulling his phone back out of his backpack slowly and using it to snap a picture before stuffing it back into his bag quietly. As amused as he was, he was fairly sure that this was not a natural occurrence and that he should probably wake her up and let her know about her horn's severe erectile dysfunction. He cleared his throat and proceeded to speak up loudly. Hey, Purple Smart, wake up! He demanded firmly, thumbing his hand on the back of one of the seats. Twilight awoke with a start, managing to fall out of her comfortable perch on one of the seats and onto the floor with a dull thud, before she collected herself and managed to stand up, looking quite miffed. What? What was that for, Anon? Is, is that an emergency? This better be an emergency. She said as she gave him a small displeased pout. Well, I suppose that's dependent on what you define as an emergency. Does your horn do that normally, or should we see about getting you a doctor once we get to Canterlot? He asked, barely suppressing an amused smile as he pointed to the wilted, spotted extremity. What are you talking about? I feel perfectly fine. She said, as she took a mirror from one of her saddlebags, slowly levitating it towards her face. What do you mean, what's wrong with my- Oh, dear merciful sisters, that is not correct. She screeched, as the mirror dropped from her arcane grip, thankfully not shattering onto the carpeted floor of the train. She looked up at her horn with a pitiable, deeply upset expression, waving her head back and forth in a way that made it incredibly difficult for Anon to not start laughing out loud at the way it wetly slapped against her own forehead. Thankfully for us all, Anon was the hero that she needed, if not the one that she deserved, bravely stealing his will against the endless sea of low-hanging fruit that dangled from her cranium, as he said with a straight face, I'm just going to assume that is not normal. Okay. I think we should see a doctor about it. Twilight didn't seem to be listening to him at the moment, though, understandably focused at her problem, maybe a little more than what was healthy. Oh no, what if the girls were right? What if they all got cursed by Zakora and now they're all back in Ponyville without me to help them figure out what's wrong? Her train of thought was clearly staring into unhealthy territory, so he got down on one knee to meet her eyes from a ways away. Twilight, he said in a firm, even tone, getting her attention. As she looked over at him unsurely, he gave her a knowing nod. You know that we can test this to see if it's a magical phenomenon or not. Just come closer to me, and if your horn goes back to normal, then you're having magic used on you actively to cause this. If not, then maybe some other more reasonable explanation than Zakora living up to your honestly sort of offensive racial stereotypes. Seriously, it feels as though you guys are using slurs in private with the way that you act over her. Twilight's eyes widen, and her face flushes slightly darker as she shakes her head in the accusation. No, no! The girls and I would never cause a Korra the... the... the C-word. As Anon visibly lost a bit of his faith in equinity, Twilight sheepishly continued. But you're right. I was chastising the girls over this yesterday. I won't let myself fall prey to easy stereotypes as an answer instead of actually trying to figure out what's happening for myself. Even if finding it out might be uncomfortable. She said, with equal parts gratitude and discomfort, as she started edging towards him. Y you'll catch me and put me somewhere soft if I pass out again, right? She asked, looking up at him with a set of soft, worrying eyes. He gave a small sigh and got on both knees, sitting on his feet, as he looked into her eyes. <sighs> Twilight, I promise I'll make sure to put you down somewhere comfy if you have another episode. 
But maybe just don't get that close to me again. I mean, three feet or so should be enough to effectively nullify any magic from what I remember when you passed me that paper in the library, so just don't get any closer than that. She gave a small nod and took a breath before looking back over at him, more determined as she slowly walked towards him. Each step closer took great force of will to commit with a foreknowledge of what the effects might be. Her hopes fell heavy under her as she demanded her body to continue to move against the urges of her instincts. Is anything happening? She asked shakily, as she continued to slowly make her way towards him, that looming feeling of dread getting more potent and more overbearing as she slowly trudged along the train car towards the other. Uh, no, not even a twitch. He said, as he watched her come closer, seven feet and five feet. Hey, maybe you should... stop. I think we would see some changes by now if it was something that was active. She gives him a thankful little look and nods, quickly dashing away from him and into a seat, looking over at him from behind one of the back seats somewhat fearfully. Oh, uh, thank you. Sorry, I just sort of lose the ability to think clearly when I get too close, so I just kept going. She explained as she shuddered a bit. Ugh, no offense meant Anon, but being around you is quite literally not a good time. He gave a small laugh at that, giving her one more of the warm, genuine smiles that she's gotten out of him. Of course, the canine certainly didn't help her discomfort initially, but as she saw that he was in fact actually happy, she relaxed a bit. Hey, people disliked my company way before I had a fuck-off anti-magical no-no square around me. This just makes my uncomfortable social presence a bit more literal than before is all. He said, as he got up and sat back down in one of the seats as well. So, uh think we can maybe find you a doctor before we go running around screaming about being cursed? Yeah, that sounds like the appropriate course of action, Nanahan. She said, as she reached up to fiddle with her little limp horn a bit more, giving a defeated sigh. <sighs> at least this still works. Anon chuckled softly at this, and nodded. And hey, if this isn't reversible, look on the bright side. There's a very high chance that this is totally somebody's fetish. Anon! Hey, flaunt it if you got it. Or, I guess flop it, in this case. Ugh, ew. As they pulled into the station and started getting off of the train, they had relatively few complications. The way seems to have been cleared for them in advance, since Twilight had alerted the local royalty as to the nature of her precious cargo, presumably to prevent any innocent bystanders from unknowingly wandering into the area of effect for his anomalous properties. Speaking of the local royalty, unless Anon's eyes needed to be checked again, which was, to be fair, a distinct possibility with the thickness on those bad boys that he wore on his face, they were here, awaiting Twilight's arrival. Two very tall and very regal-looking ponies with wings and horns and lustrous flowing manes stood before them, wearing armor of gold and... Wait, was that metal? It was a bluish hue, certainly not silver by the looks of it. Whatever metal it was, the shoes on the latter one were quite nice-looking by Anon's reckoning. The taller of the two stepped forward to speak as they got off of the train. She was a creamy white in color, with a hint of soft pink to her coat and bright warm magenta eyes. Her mane flowed beneath her golden crown in an array of dazzling colors that, to Anon, resembled a majestic aura. Welcome home, Twilight, she said, as the little purple pony dashed towards her, stopping to give a proper and respectful bow to both of them before nuzzling against the princess's neck softly as the large pony put a foreleg around her and hugged her gently. After greeting her student, she turned her attention to Anon, regarding him in a less familiar but no less respectful and warm manner. And are you the unusual one that my student informed me of? She asked, as she looked at him slowly up and down. I was honestly expecting you to be a bit more... imposing, judging by the notes that she sent me. Anon gave a somewhat nervous smile to the diarch, shrugging and giving her a polite nod of recognition, not making any move to bow as he spoke to her. With all due respect, ma'am, I think it is best that your perception of me remain as non-threatening as possible. I would come closer to greet you more properly, but I think we both already understand why that's a bad idea. He said with a hint of humor in his voice. The princess gave a small nod at this, looking down at her student and slowly rubbing her back. Man, Twilight really seemed to be all over her. And I suppose that after getting close to him like that again, being so near her teacher, who she was very familiar with and who was likely a font of magic, was like a reptile, basking under a cozy sun lamp, soaking in all of that good horse magic vibes. Or something. He certainly wasn't any sort of expert on the subject, considering up until yesterday, he was unaware the subject even existed. The moment passed as a small cough was issued from the slightly smaller midnight blue alicorn with the mane that seemed to hold the nice guy itself. She walked forwards and raised a hoof to her chest, speaking in a clear, firm cadence. We are pleased to make your acquaintance, human. Our name is Luna, and we command the moon and stars. As for Celestia, she commands the sun. 
She seemed to think that her intro was impressive, giving him an expectant look, to which he simply replied, It's nice to meet you too, Luna. This is a very nice place you have here, by the way. Love the architecture, and it's very whimsical. He said as he looked around, rubbing his chin slightly. A bit too many swirls and patterns for my taste, but hey, what you gonna do? He said softly, before turning back towards Celestia. Oh, uh, by the way, can we get Twilight to a doctor? She seems to have developed a rather glaring issue with her horn. Celestia blinked as she looked down at Twilight, actually paying proper attention to her now it seemed, rather than placating her in the more automatic sense that she had been a few minutes before. Why? What do you mean by- Lady Tap Dancing Faust, what in Tartarus is that? Celestia asked as her eyes widened. Yeah, I guess it's one of those things where if you're not thinking about it, you might not notice. I mean, it strikes me as odd to go around staring at someone's horn if you don't need to be, right? Anon rambled as he watched all of this play out in mild amusement. Still can't believe he brought up Nono Square. Jesus, that was so long ago. Good meme though, good meme. Anywho, let's get on to our super intelligent donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe9852, Hunt and Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Sky Uchiha, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kids on A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Tim Bob, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Tri Ray, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Hunter Mara, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal Kanderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mystery CU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hotrick Plinkart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, Shyfire, Stamp, and Dion Baseri. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.